What if we could meal prep, but still have a freshly cooked dinner in only about 10 minutes each night? Let me show you how to do just that. When I was in college, my friends and I would eat at a local Mongolian grill a couple of times per week. It was good, cheap, and we could always stretch it into two meals. I finally decided it was time to recreate this at home, meal prep style. You can prep your vegetables, cook some meat for Snack City, and have this stir-fry meal fresh on the table each night in no time. Let's get into it. Preparing the meat is step one. I've got about five pounds of boneless skinless chicken breast here that has been firming up in the freezer for a little over an hour. I'm gonna cut this into thin slices of about one eighth of an inch to a fourth of an inch in thickness, and we're gonna do a process called velveting to this chicken. It's a way to tenderize the meat to give it that silky and smooth texture you often see in Chinese restaurants. There are a number of different ways that you could velvet your chicken. There's oil blanching, water blanching, but for this application, because we are moving this chicken directly into Snack City, I find it's actually best to boil it completely to make things easier down the road. So once all of your chicken is chopped, move it into a large bowl and then add in two and a half tablespoons or 20 grams of cornstarch, one half of a cup or 120 grams of liquid egg whites, and then three tablespoons or 45 grams of soy sauce. Get in there with your hands and start tossing things around. We want these three ingredients to be well incorporated so that we have even coverage on all the pieces of the chicken. Once you've got it well mixed, move this bowl into the fridge and allow it to marinate for about 30 minutes. While that chicken is in the fridge, you can take some time to wash and chop up all of the vegetables that you plan to use over the week. This is a choose your own adventure kind of thing. It's all going into a stir fry anyway, so you can subtract or add whatever you like and it's gonna be just fine. You don't need to ask me what you can replace the zucchini with if you don't like it, just leave it out. How often you wanna eat this meal over the course of the week will determine the amount of vegetables that you should prepare. I could eat this for dinner every night and not get sick of it, so I usually cut up a decent amount of vegetables. As I'm cutting them up, I'll place them into one of my fresh and safe containers to prepare for storage in the fridge. I normally plan for three to five days worth of vegetables whenever I take the time to prep this meal, and I went with a wide variety this time. I did some onion, red and green peppers, zucchini, cabbage, garlic, ginger, cucumber, carrots, and I even had some frozen broccoli in the freezer. That's a lot of vegetables. Papa's out here becoming the number one vegetable eater in all the land, and some people are starting to talk about it. They're calling him king of the vegetables. Wow, Scott Pelly from 60 Minutes. Even he knows I'm Joshy Vitamins and Minerals. This style of meal makes it so easy to get in a wide variety of vegetables. I've talked about it in the past and you guys know, I think every vegetable I've ever come across is a zero out of 10. But with this kind of stir fry meal, I can put away almost a pound of vegetables like it's nothing. One of my secret weapons for adding volume in my meals is to use cabbage. 100 grams of cabbage is only around 25 calories and it's almost flavorless, so it's easy to add to any of these stir fry style meals. It can be intimidating if you've never bought a head of cabbage before because it's this dense, heavy cannonball of leaves, but all you need to do is quarter it and cut down each quarter into thin shreds and let the layers do most of the work. In addition to all the vegetables, I chop up some ginger, garlic, and scallion, which is known as the Asian triad, and a lot of good Asian food starts with these three ingredients. A microplane would be nice for the ginger and the garlic, but I didn't go buy one until after I filmed this video. For the scallions, I just chop them up into the whites and the greens. I'll use the whites in the stir fry and the greens as a garnish for the final dish. After everything has been chopped, I remove all of the air using the Fresh and Save vacuum pump from Zwilling, who is the sponsor of today's video. I actually use the Fresh and Save vacuum kit daily to help keep Snack City safe, and once I got my hands on some of these Fresh and Save glass containers, I knew they would be perfect for the stir fry prep. When you spend the time to meal prep your food, you want it to stay fresh for as long as possible, and this Fresh and Save vacuum set helps keep food fresh for up to five times longer. The vegetables stayed crisp throughout the week and I used the fresh and save bags to store the chicken inside of Snack City in my freezer. I've had this chicken in the freezer for weeks and there is still no sign of freezer burn anywhere. This is Willing Fresh and Save Vacuum Starter Set comes with a rechargeable vacuum pump, a small and large vacuum container, as well as two small and two medium vacuum bags. There's a link in the description for this starter set and if you use the code MEALPREP at checkout, they will throw in an extra 10 medium bags for free. Unfortunately, the code only works for US customers, but the starter sets are available everywhere. To the top of my finished stir fry, I like to add a fresh element as well. So I take a vegetable peeler down the length of a cucumber and create some cucumber ribbons, and then I also like to make some pickled carrots. I make the pickled carrots the same way I did the cucumbers by taking a vegetable peeler down the length of the carrot to create ribbons, and then I make my brine by mixing together about a cup and a half of water, a cup and a half of vinegar, one tablespoon of sugar, and one teaspoon of salt. Now, you may need more or less liquid depending on how many carrots you want to make, but it's really hard to mess this up. If you find you don't have enough liquid to cover all your carrots, you can just pour more water and vinegar over the top and it will turn out just fine. This is what I do when I find myself short on brine. I don't worry about adding any extra salt or sugar, and they are still wonderfully pickled carrots in the end. From this point, they just need time to pickle, and they should last in your fridge for a couple of weeks. Toss on the lids, take out all the air, and move them into the fridge with the rest of your vegetables. 
Let's get back to that chicken now that it has had time to marinate. Bring a large pot of water to a light boil and add in your chicken in batches to cook. I learned the hard way while filming this that my induction burner isn't even powerful enough to boil water, so I had to take an audible and move it back to the regular stove. There's nothing magical happening here, just boiling it for about two to three minutes until it has cooked through. With classical velveting techniques, you would normally do this in a flash for maybe 30 to 45 seconds and then finish it in the wok, but because I am moving this into the freezer for later prep, I prefer to cook it all the way through. I did the five pounds of chicken in two batches, and once it had boiled for two to three minutes, I then transferred it over onto a large sheet pan to dry. Using a spider or a colander to remove this chicken from the water would have been ideal, but I have a very bare bones kitchen and I don't have either of those tools. So I'm doing this in what could be the most inefficient way possible. I set a paper towel down first to help pick up any of the water that traveled out of the pot with the spoon, and then I used another on top to help soak up any of the excess moisture. After you've got it fairly dry, move this pan into your freezer for a couple of hours. Freezing uncovered, ideally in a single layer, is how you flash freeze in a home kitchen. It gives the food a chance to freeze individually and create ice crystals on the exterior of each piece of food. This is especially important for if you want to vacuum seal things because it gives them a chance to freeze on their own instead of in one big clump. So when the chicken is frozen solid, you can pull it from the freezer and crack the sheet pan like you would an ice tray. It should release from the pan and if any of the pieces are still sticking together, a quick bang on the countertop should break them all up. I then moved the chicken pieces into a fresh and safe bag to be vacuum sealed and stored. For the five pounds of chicken, I ended up using two of the medium sized bags. Use the vacuum pump to take out all of the air and now your chicken will be safe and sound and ready to go inside of your freezer. For the purposes of nutritional estimating, if that is something that you care about, you will need to obtain a value for the final cooked weight of all of your chicken to make it easier to track on an as needed basis. Throw it on a scale, subtract out the weight of the bags in the bowl, and you have yourself a final cooked weight. Then you'll want to create a new recipe in your tracking app with the ingredients that went into cooking the chicken. Name it and date it so that you know which one it is, and input the cooked weight of the finished product. Then when it comes time to make the stir fry, you can weigh out your portion, input how many grams you used, and have a good estimate for the nutrition totals of the chicken for that specific meal. You'll want to do this exact same process for the sauce you're about to make as well. Next, you're going to prepare some rice. I usually do my normal two to three cups of dry rice. And our last bit of prep is to make the sauce. Into a container, add one and a half cups or 360 grams of chicken stock, one half of a cup or 120 grams of soy sauce, two and a third tablespoons or 35 grams of mirin, one tablespoon or 15 grams of water, three tablespoons or 48 grams of oyster sauce, and then two tablespoons or 16 grams of cornstarch. This is what I would consider to be a starter sauce that can be used as a base to add more complexity to later. Having a plain base leaves room for variety with things like gochujang, brown sugar, or chili garlic oil so you don't need to have the same flavor every night. Toss on a lid and you can keep this in your fridge for a couple of weeks. And now that the prep work is finally done, let me show you how you can throw together one of these bad boys in about 10 minutes. When dinner time rolls around and you are ready for your adventure, pull out all of your prepped vegetables from the fridge. If you don't care about tracking calories, then you can go straight from these containers to the wok. If you are someone who needs to track, what I recommend doing is placing a bowl on a scale and adding all of your ingredients to that bowl first and tracking as you add. This will cook very quickly, so you don't really want to be messing around with weighing and tracking as you add stuff to the wok, just do it all first to save yourself the hassle. After I pulled the vegetables from their respective containers, I lid them back up and re-vacuum them before moving back into the fridge. The amounts that you decide to use here are totally up to you. This is like your own Mongolian style grill in your kitchen. You're not limited to the one bowl like you are at the restaurants. This is your playground. Don't let your dreams be dreams. Fill that second bowl if you need to. As you're filling your bowl, you should be preheating your wok over high heat. Then you can add some oil and dump in your vegetables. I like to get the onions, ginger, and garlic down first so that they get the most heat and let everything else fall around them. I allow the vegetables to cook for a few minutes first so that they can develop some color before I add anything else in. I'll usually add a sprinkle of salt to help encourage water to come out and then add the chicken. And the chicken is already cooked, so it just needs to be thawed to be ready. I go straight from the freezer right into the wok. Today I decided to go with a Korean style stir fry and I added a couple teaspoons of gochugaru and gochujang to the wok. I stir that in to make sure it's well incorporated and then I create a hole in the center to pour in my sauce. For one large serving like you see here, I shoot for about 50 to 60 grams or a fourth of a cup of the brown sauce that we prepared earlier. When that sauce hits the heat and starts to bubble, it will begin to thicken. Now you can add in some cooked rice to finish it off. Just like with fried rice, leftover rice works best for this because it's had a chance to dry out a bit. Now I know we are going to have a cacophony of squeals from our friendly armchair microbiologists in the comments saying that if you eat leftover rice, you will die. Here's all I will say. Don't store your rice at room temperature, keep it in the fridge, and you're probably going to be just fine. I've been eating leftover rice for 28 years. My family? Doing it even longer. I have thousands and thousands of people that have used my recipes for the better part of a decade, and I have never once had a single report of a problem. 
but if you want to make fresh rice every time, be my guest. Once the rice is warm and mixed in, this is ready to eat. Transfer it to a bowl and top with your pickled carrots, cucumber ribbons, and the green onions. This is just one example of what you can do with this stir fry style prep. When I filmed this particular video, I was nearing the end of my cutting phase, so I went a little light on the oil and the rice and heavy on the vegetables. Sesame or chili garlic oil can add great flavor to these stir fries. And like I said in the beginning, it's a choose your own adventure kind of meal. You could prep noodles, use rice cakes, or go 100% cabbage if you're into the low carb thing. It will all be delicious. Look at this cat. How can you not love it? It's full of a wide variety of vegetables for nutrient density, has a good amount of lean chicken breast for protein, great flavor from the sauce and gochujang, and added freshness on top from the carrots and the cucumber. Again, for the purposes of tracking, you will want to create recipes in your app for the sauce and the chicken so that you can easily track them by the gram. Then everything else can be tracked like normal. This bowl ended up being about 495 calories and 43 grams of protein. This style of meal prep is something that I had never personally done before I filmed this video, and I quite enjoyed it. It's perfect for anyone who wants to meal prep, but doesn't love the idea of eating five day old food or the exact same meal for every day. It's the best of both worlds too, because if that doesn't bother you, you could just make a double or triple batch of the stir fry, package it up and store it in the fridge for later meals. This would save you from cooking and cleaning for a couple of nights. I wrote out detailed instructions for how I would go about this style of prep on my website, and there is a link to that in the description. Another thank you to Zwilling for sponsoring this video. I've also included a link to the Fresh and Safe starter set in the description as well. Asian food is my favorite, and this style of prep is now going to be a staple in my eating. I hope this video has inspired many of you to give it a try. I know you guys will love it. See you next week.